Welcome to Principles of Biology. This lecture is the first part of Chapter 1, an introduction to biology. First off, we're going to start off with answering the question, what is biology? And very basically, biology is just the study of life. So we're going to be looking at living things, um, how things are living, how they interact with each other, and a variety of topics focused on life. Alright, so our next question, so since biology is a study of life, we have to actually define what life is. So that's kind of our second question in this chapter. So what is life exactly? So in this course, we have um, eight characteristics of life and then another four properties of biology that we're going to look at. So a total of 12 principles of biology. So the first principle or the first character characteristic of life states that cells are the simplest unit of life up here. And this actually goes with one theory in biology, one really important theory called the cell theory at the bottom of your slide. So this theory states that all organisms are made up of cells. Cells are the smallest, most basic unit of life, and that cells can only come from pre-existing cells by some type of cell division. And we'll get into the types of cell division later on in the course, um, but they include mitosis and meiosis. Our second characteristic of life is that living organisms use energy. And up on the slide, we have the energy cycle in the biosphere. And we'll start at the bottom, down here. So in the biosphere, we're going to take carbon dioxide, CO2, and water. This is the H2O right here. To those two molecules, we're going to add sunlight coming in as these yellow squigglies. So these three reactants down here. They're going to go through a process called photosynthesis. So we're going to convert the light carbon dioxide and water into food and oxygen as well. So the food, it's a type of organic molecule and we're going to focus on sugar or glucose during most of this course. But this can also include other types of food and we'll get into that later. All right, so from photosynthesis, we have these organic molecules, this glucose and oxygen. This glucose and oxygen then goes into a process called cellular respiration down here. And the main goal of cellular respiration is to make these energy intermediates, or what we call ATP. And then this ATP, it can be used by the organism to do pretty much anything the cell or the organism needs to do. So like movement or to do other types of chemical reactions down here. And the cool thing about cellular respiration is that when you take this glucose and oxygen, they go through cellular respiration, you get products produced, so you get CO2 and water down here. So photosynthesis and cellular respiration, they make up this energy cycle shown in the diagram up here. So this is kind of what we're going to cover when we get more into how living organisms use energy, how they do these different metabolic reactions. Alright, our third characteristic of life is that living organisms interact with their environment. And you can see that here, so we have a plant, it grows towards sunlight, so the plants, they interact, they change their growth patterns according to their environment. And then here we have a mammal um, that during the summer, the mammal has brown fur, it can blend in with its environment. And then during the winter, the fur is white, so it can still blend in really well with its environment. So living things, they interact with their environment, so any non-living things, they can interact with that, they can also interact with each other. The fourth characteristic of life states that living organisms maintain a homeostasis. 
And homeostasis is just how living things maintain a constant um, body temperature, for example, or they maintain constant pH. This is another example. Some organisms are called endotherms, like the bird right here, and also you're an endotherm. So endotherms can maintain their internal body temperature just by producing their own heat. Other organisms are exotherms, so to maintain their body temperature, they actually have to move in their environment. So think of like a lizard or snake, for example. So lizards, if they get cold, they can sun themselves on a rock, and then if they get too hot, they can go back under the rock into the shade. The fifth characteristic of life states that living organisms, they grow and develop. And this happens in two different growth processes. So we have unicellular growth. This is just when you have one cell and that one cell gets bigger. It increases in volume. Another type of growth is multicellular. This is where cells go through cell division, um, specifically mitosis. And you start off with one cell. That one cell splits into two cells. Then those two cells can split again and you end up with four cells. So you can have different types of growth. Organisms can also go through development shown by the frog life cycle up here. So frogs, they lay eggs, those eggs grow, the larva hatch, you have tadpoles, then over time those tadpoles, they go through metamorphosis, so they grow legs, they absorb their tail, they grow back legs, and then eventually you get an adult frog. The sixth characteristic of life states that we have this genetic material, and we'll learn about this later, it's DNA, but this genetic material provides a blueprint for reproduction and for these organisms to grow and develop. And we'll get into this, this is a whole unit in this course, so important things we're going to look at, we're going to look at DNA, which is that genetic material, the genes that are found in DNA. We'll look at another type of nucleic acid called RNA, and then how this DNA and RNA, how it's used to make proteins that give us all our traits and characteristics. Seventh characteristic of life, population of, populations of organisms evolve from one generation to the next. So this is just stating that organisms, they can adapt to their environment over time from one generation to the next. And we won't get into evolution a lot in this course, but just so you're aware, it's a very important topic in biology. And evolution, basically it states that just populations of organisms change from one generation to the next over time, they adapt to their environment. Then our final characteristic of life states that all species, past and present, are related by an evolutionary history. And this relates back to um, what we just talked about on characteristic number seven back there. So all species, they're going to be related to each other, and we'll look at what are called three different domains of life. And these include the domain bacteria, shown here in the yellow, the domain archaea in the orange, and then the third domain is eukarya in the blue up here. And then the domain eukarya includes plants, fungi, animals, and protist. So these four kingdoms up here in the blue. All right, so we went through these first eight properties of life. So just to review, cells are the smallest unit of life. Organisms use energy. Living things can interact with their environment. Living things maintain the homeostasis. Living things grow and develop. Living things have genetic material, and that serves as a blueprint for what we look like, so our traits and characteristics. Populations of organisms evolve over time, and all species are related to each other. In addition to these eight characteristics of life, we have four more kind of principles that we will be looking at. So the ninth principle, structure determines function. 
And in this example, we have lots of different bird beaks showing up on the slide. Some bird beaks are long and skinny, like the kiwi right here. Other bird beaks are strong, sharp. They're used to tear up meat, like the eagle right here. And then other birds have strong beaks that are used to crush seeds to get the food. Right here. So organisms have these adaptations or these different structures that have different functions. The tenth principle in biology we're going to be looking at is that new properties of life emerge from complex interactions. So this just states that new things like the human eyeball used for sight. The eyeball is very, very complex. So it has lots of different cells that are going to work together. Those cells have to collect information from the environment. They send them to nerve cells. That information gets sent to the brain. And then our brain has to interpret what we're actually seeing. So things are getting more complex. We have very complex interactions between lots of different types of cells. The tenth principle, biology is an experimental science. And this you're going to experience more in lab. So some labs we're going to be doing during the semester are more using the scientific method, coming up with your own experiments, making mistakes, uh, which happens in science all the time. So again, lab is more about the experience of actually doing science as opposed to getting the right answer. And hopefully we won't see things start on fire like this picture here. And our final principle of biology that we're going to be looking at in this course is that biology affects our society. So if you're planning on going into a healthcare field, whether it's being a vet tech, so the veterinary field, or um, healthcare as it relates to humans, you're going to have to know biology in order to treat those animals and people. Um, we live in an agriculture society, so you can just, living your daily life here in Colby, we're affected by agriculture, growing crops, and that's all biology. So dealing with living things. And then also kind of a new thing is looking for ways to get alternative energy. And this affects biology because we're taking habitats, we're turning them into wind fields, we're turning them into solar fields. So it's looking at how this affects our biology, but also how we're helping the environment by using these renewable energy sources. So in addition to these 12 principles of biology that we just went through, um, living things are also grouped into 10 levels of organization. Now let's quickly go through these and we'll refer back to it throughout the course. But we start off with kind of chemistry, and yes, we'll have to cover a little bit of chemistry in order to understand biology. So all living things are made up of atoms, so we have that first level of atoms. Those atoms come together to make up molecules and then macromolecules. Macromolecules are large molecules like we're going to look at carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids for those. These macromolecules then come together to form cells right here. So remember cells are that most basic unit of life. So we're going to be spending a lot of time looking at cells, well most of the time in this course looking at cells, how they work, um, and kind of that area. Then these cells, they form tissues. So for example, here we have certain cells, they form muscle tissues. Those different muscle tissues and other types of tissues, they form organs like the heart right here. Different organs you find in organisms. So here we have a, one individual. If you have multiple organisms, they create a population. That population makes a community, so all the living things in an area. If you include living and non-living things, it's an ecosystem. So here we have the birds, we have trees, we have water, we have rocks. For example, that's the ecosystem. 
And the final organization is the biosphere, right here. And that's just the earth and the atmosphere that surrounds it. So anywhere that living things live. Okay. So for this first section of biology, we just kind of went through um, biology is a study of life up here. So we kind of defined life, which include the first eight principles of biology. And then we have four more principles of biology that we're going to be looking at throughout this course as well. So we have 12 total principles we're going to be looking at throughout this course. In addition, we looked at the levels of organization, so how we have these little tiny atoms that make up molecules, cells, and so on, all the way up to our whole biosphere up at the top.